This morning, ISIS is expanding from the Middle East to new territory in West Africa. The extremist group accepted a pledge of allegiance from Nigeria-based Boko Haram. CBS News senior security contributor Mike Morell is in Washington. He is a former CIA deputy director. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Just one quick question about what we just heard from Holly. The significance of this victory in Tikrit in terms of eliminating or, or doing great damage to ISIS. It's the first major setback for ISIS um, since they did their blitzkrieg across Iraq. So it is a very important development, Charlie. Even though not much U.S. involvement? Correct. Okay. Turning to Boko Haram, and what's the impact of Boko Haram and its allegiance to ISIS? So what, what, what ISIS gets out of this, Charlie, is a major advance for their brand. They're in this struggle with al-Qaeda for leadership of the global jihadist movement. And now they've just got one of the most important terrorist groups in the world, one of the largest 10,000 fighters, to sign up with them. What Boko Haram gets out of this is also advantage for their brand. They're now playing with the big boys. And so they're going to get more money. They're going to get more recruits. Is either group more dangerous now, Mike, do you think? And what does this alliance mean for the West? Good question, Gail. I don't think ISIS, this makes ISIS more dangerous. I think this makes Boko Haram more dangerous. Boko Haram, for a long time, has focused primarily on local Nigerian targets. This alliance could now get them to focus more on the West, and that's, what, that's, that, that's the danger here. So the inevitable next question is, should we be going after Boko Haram in Nigeria? So they're not a threat yet to us, Nora. Um, I think if they become one, then it becomes a different story. But I think we cross that bridge when we come to it. Right now, we stay focused on the head of the snake, and that's ISIS in Iraq. We also saw that Homeland Security released a handbook that ISIS, uh, that they found online. It was sort of a how-to, how to get into mm -hmm. Syria, how to, to move forward. Should we be concerned about that? Do you think that's something that, the, for instance, the four girls out of, the three girls out of uh, London used? So I think there are many, many ways to get to Syria, and it's very easy to get to Syria. I don't think you really need a handbook. Um, what I found interesting about the handbook is the colloquial English that's used in it. It's clearly written by a Westerner, um, a Brit, an American. Um, it's almost like a travel guide that you get in the mail before you head off on a trip. You know, take this, don't take this. Um, very interesting. All right, Michael Morrell, thank you so much. So Boko Haram and ISIS officially teaming up. Congressman Adam Kinzinger joins us. Good evening, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Greta. Well, um, I guess it, we, two weeks ago we didn't think it was going to be a big surprise, and now, you know, the, the big the news. So what does this mean? ISIS and Boko Haram teaming up. You know, Boko Haram has existed. They've been a very brutal terror network, kidnapping girls, murdering people. Uh, they're going to continue to do that whether they align themselves under ISIS or not. But what we're seeing here, which is, I think, the bigger frightening picture, is you're seeing an alignment of these different radical groups, whether it's al-Qaeda, whether it's ISIS, Boko Haram, or lesser-known groups in Libya and things like that, that are now beginning to align themselves under one jihadist umbrella and, you know, would have, you know, in essence, the same spiritual leaders and everything else with that. What I've said, and I've been saying this for a while, is when ISIS has momentum, you're going to have easier time recruiting people. You're going to have an easier time bringing other groups under your umbrella. And that's why stopping the momentum of ISIS, killing ISIS members where they exist, and rolling them back from territory they have is so important because, as I've said, everybody's a fan of a certain sports team when they're doing well. When that team's not doing well, it's hard to recruit new fans. All right. Well, it, to me, the, this is like a, one of our worst nightmares because I think what it does is it, you know, it grows. It gives them so much empower, it empowers both groups so much when they join together. So yeah. I think this is just horrible. Uh, is this something though that was inevitable, or could we have prevented this? Oh, I think we could have prevented this. Again, every every group, whether it's Boko Haram, whether it's ISIS, whether it's Al-Qaeda. Uh, every group wants to survive and wants to kind of take over the jihadist leadership role. And in the case, in the last few years, many of those have been competing for that role. Some cases they fight each other. They put out competing press releases, in essence, against each other. And now what you're seeing is ISIS has taken the mantle of jihadist extremists, the Islamic jihadist group, you know, to be part of. And so now all these groups are falling in line under it. And so you have common leadership and everything else. And this is brutal and, frankly, terrible. Congressman, what have we been doing about Boko Haram? It's not like a big secret, but the last I noticed that best people are holding up signs with a hashtag, bring back our yeah. girls. And that was last April, and they still aren't back. But exactly what have we been doing to prevent this, you know, the atrocities and the spreading of Boko Haram in northern Africa? 
Well, I'm, I'm sure there's some, you know, level of things we can't talk about on, on different factions, but look, I don't think enough. Like I mean, what? The reality like is this. Well, wait, wait, use your imagination. What are we doing to fight <laughs> Boko Haram, and now they've teamed up with ISIS? Well, there could be some intelligence assets operating and things like that, but I don't think it's enough. I think the president needs to make a declarative statement that if you're an Islamic jihadist, if you're an extremist, if you're a terrorist, it doesn't matter whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in the Middle East, wherever you exist, uh, understand that that will either put you in jail if you're in Europe or it's going to mean the end of your life if you're in one of these other countries. And so now that Boko Haram has joined ISIS, well, guess what? Boko Haram now has the same target on their back that ISIS has in Syria and Iraq. I think it's important for the president to show strong leadership. I'm not going to hold my breath for it. I don't want to take away, you know, the fact that he's doing some things. He is. But we've got to be doing a lot more because this threat is going to continue to grow unless we do that. Well, not, not, it's grown so much that now we've got two of the, the main ones, the most vicious two groups, uh, teaming up and using uh, similar tactics. Even they're, they're me even Boko Haram lose, learning media tactics from ISIS, which is just unthinkable. <laughs> to have their training in the ISIS camps and come back. Welcome to Flashpoints. I'm Jeff Begays, and I'm joined by CBS News Senior National Security Analyst Juan Zarate. Boko Haram has pledged its allegiance to ISIS. Is this more propaganda, or is this an alliance that makes ISIS stronger? This actually does make ISIS stronger, at least ideologically. In, in the immediate term, it doesn't necessarily add to the virulence or the potency of ISIS in its fight in Syria and Iraq. And so you're not necessarily going to see a flood of Boko Haram operatives you know, floating to Syria to, to help uh, ISIS fight. That said, what this does is it gives uh, wind in the sails of the notion that the Islamic State is really the vanguard of this global jihadi movement. They've now brought this very potent group in West Africa that has flown under the banner of al-Qaeda for a number of years under its tent. And so now you have the reach of the Islamic State all the way from the heart of the Middle East to West Africa. And in some ways, you can begin to see a sort of a connective arc here between the movements that have started to pledge allegiance, like the groups in Libya, like the groups in Sinai. And Boko Haram, which holds territory, is vicious, and is quite potent, uh, has now added their name to the mix. But how potent is Boko Haram beyond the borders of Nigeria, uh, and does this help that group grow? Uh, potentially. What you have here is a, a symbiotic relationship, and so both groups help each other at a minimum with propaganda, potentially with men, materiel, and resources, and certainly ideologically, where they, they are both now committed to the same cause of the establishment of the Islamic Caliphate. In some ways, Boko Haram establishing sort of the western edge of that caliphate imagined uh, sort of forward. Um, and so, yes, they could potentially help each other. But Boko Haram has proven incredibly potent. You've seen what they've done in northern and northeastern Nigeria. They've incurred into Cameroon. Uh, they've begun to threaten Niger and Chad. And that's in part why, Jeff, you've seen this coalition of West African countries coalesce and begin to try to fight uh, to support the Nigerian government against Boko Haram because all of the countries in that region see it as a destabilizing threat. Back to a focus on ISIS. There have been reports that ISIS is showing strains. Are those reports accurate? I think bits and pieces of that reporting are accurate because uh, the Islamic State is coming under real pressure. There's no question about that. The air assaults, uh, the offensives coming from the Kurds, not just in Iraq but also Syria, uh, as well as some of the activity um, that we've seen to cut off their resources, for example, their supply of oil and their ability to take it to market. All of that is being squeezed. Um, the reality is, as well, they've got internal fissures. You've got uh, domestic members of the group, like the Iraqi Sunnis. Uh, then you've got a lot of foreign fighters coming in to the tune of thousands. And, uh, you know, in any organization, you're going to have conflicts. And when you're under some de degree of stress, you're going to see some fissures. And so, I think that's true, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't think we should uh, count on the fact that the Islamic State will implode because they've got a very s steep and real hierarchy and real discipline internally. And so all of this may be building toward this battle in, in Mosul. We will see. Juan Zarate, I'm Jeff Begays, and that's Flashpoints. For some time, Boko Haram has been aligning itself with ISIS. 
They've opened similar social media accounts full of propaganda, released their first beheading video, and even displayed the ISIS flag. Report. Experts note that the groups have fundamentally different goals. While both organizations want to reestablish Sharia law across their territory, ISIS has displayed more determination and success with creating an Islamic State. But if accepted, Boko Haram's pledge to ISIS will benefit both sides. Right now, Boko Haram has a strong presence in Nigeria. It's been responsible for thousands of deaths since its rise to power in 2009. But there are signs this may change. The terrorist group is being surrounded by troops from the African Union and neighboring countries. Analysts have suggested that Boko Haram's interest in joining ISIS may be a bid for more protection and support from opposing armies. Under the global caliphate of ISIS, Boko Haram will obtain more credibility and influence, and in turn ISIS will have an even farther reach across Africa. However, some analysts say that this Pledge of Allegiance is a last grab at power by Boko Haram as it faces growing international military opposition.